Hey guys, welcome back. So this is my first item of 2022. So this is a uh, set we're going to open up and look at from the 2021 catalog that just came in uh, this week. And uh, it's kind of half a set of, uh, this is the cars that go with the set. There's an engine that goes with this that hasn't arrived yet. Should be here in about, uh, hopefully a couple weeks. Uh, hopefully it's not too far behind. But anyway, we're going to take a look at this set. Uh, which you can use with or without the engine, so it's still a great set if you uh, are interested in it. And we're just going to take a look at it and see what it includes and uh, what it looks like. So let's do this. Okay guys, so if you haven't guessed it, this is the New York Central uh, Pacemaker expansion set, or they're calling it the freight set on the uh, shipping box. Interesting enough, on this set, I've never seen this before, but there is no label anywhere on this box at all. Not on the sides, front, back, nothing. So you, it's kind of weird. I've uh, never seen that before. I don't know if it was just missed or we're now uh, saving money by not putting labels on. I'm not sure what's going on there. But anyway, uh, no labels on the main box that the cars are in. And then you're going to get six cars in this uh, set. So first of all, these are the uh, <coughs> obviously uh, pacemaker freight service box cars, which these are scale cars and they're gorgeous, right? I always love the pacemaker scheme, uh, the color scheme on the pacemaker cars. They did a nice mix of these, so we're gonna go over the different ones. And so you get basically um, five box cars and a caboose. And one of the uh, box cars is actually a vision box car. Uh, so we'll go over that too. So you get basically four box cars, a vision box car, and then you get the caboose. And this is gonna go with the new um, uh, Mohawks that are about to be released. So I actually got the uh, Fantasy Scheme Mohawk, the one that's actually gonna have the same paint scheme as these, uh, but they have the regular uh, traditional black ones too that you can get also. But uh, I'm pretty excited about that. I don't have a Mohawk in my collection, so that will be the first one I have, and it's going to look fantastic. I actually saw this set at York, uh, at Lionel's booth, and they did a great job on the red paint because I was afraid the paint was going to be just like this bright red or something, and it's not. It has the perfect muted red uh, for the pacemaker colors, so I'm hoping the engine will match these perfectly, and that would be great uh, to see that. The sample at York did uh, have the correct paint color match, so... Hopefully the production uh, engines will also have the same exact uh, match. So, But uh, yeah, let's uh, pull these out and dig into each one and see what you get with the set. All right, so here's the six cars you get. Um, you get a Vision box car here. It says Legacy Control, Rail Sounds, Electrocoupler on that one. You get a New York Central Caboose. This is a wood-sided caboose, I think. Yep, on this one. You get another box car, different road number, uh, die-cast trucks, operating couplers, opening doors. There's another box car here. What's strange is this, this says also legacy control, rail sounds, electrocoupler. There's another one down here, same thing, legacy control, rail sounds, electrocoupler. And another one that says that. And there's only one box car that just says die-cast, so um, that's actually too many. I don't know what the deal with this is. So. I don't know if these labels are just all wrong or what's going on. We'll have to get in there and check it out what's going on. But anyway, you get six uh, cars total in this set. So let's start with the easier one, which is the uh, caboose right here. And we'll check all these out. All right, so here we go. Got the caboose here. Uh, typical pacemaker paint scheme. It is a wood-sided caboose. It's got pretty standard details on here. I wouldn't say it goes uh, crazy to like uh, the premier line of scale. Like for instance, this little chain right here is plastic. Uh, it's not a real chain like I'm used to seeing. This little, all this is all plastic across the whole back. I think the only metal on the actual uh, body itself are the ladders right here and that's it. As I can see they bent them over at the bottom here so that's I think the only metal all this is plastic going down here and everything so it looks a little just a little bit cheaper than usual um, but that just may have been for this set I don't know if there's gonna be a pattern here um, pretty standard couplers it's got long couplers on it so 
It does have a light switch on here, although it doesn't tell you which one is on and off. I guess you'll just have to find out by playing with it. It just says lights right there. There is a, a hole for a smoke switch, but there's no smoke. So it looks like they're using the same body for multiples. Um, and the stairs are just solid stairs. They don't have grates in them or anything like that. So, um, yeah, I noticed one other thing that I don't think I've seen before, although I may have not noticed it, but this says made in Vietnam. So, and it has a sort of a new built by Lionel logo on the bottom here in white. So kind of a little different. They even have a Lionel LLC stamping in the bottom here. Um, in the in the uh, mold that I haven't seen before so I don't think I've noticed that but anyway uh, but it'll do uh, for what it is but I will say it looks more like traditional line level than uh, the, the scale level as far as the details go it does have like sort of um, matted windows you know uh, frosted right so it is lit uh, but you won't see the bulb inside and everything, so that's kind of a nice feature. But, yep, so that's the caboose. Alright, here's our next one. Uh, so this is a uh, just a plain box car, it's not a Vision 1. Uh, same made in Vietnam, so it looks like that's where we're being made here. No more China for this set. Um, uh, nice colors, graphics, standard kind of a... Almost like a PS1 box car. Looks like you know pretty much all the same details that we're used to. So that's all the same there. Now, they did uh, when they made this set. They did something kind of cool. They did a couple of different. Instead of just doing the same graphics on every single one, they used a couple of different versions. So, for instance, if you notice, this has New York Central with a black background on it, and you're going to see some of them will have a, a New York Central with like the red background that blends it in with no background so they kind of mix this up a little bit here on the colors between black and white so you can see this one has a, uh, a black New York Central graphics on it there's some that have white instead so they sort of mixed it up which was kind of nice so so this one's pretty cool so this one's a, a good one right here so let's uh, check out the next one all right here's the next car and you can see on this one we've got white lettering here and uh, we've got uh, red background in the uh, oval there for the New York Central. On the bottom it's pretty much all the same. So pretty much all the same, just a totally num different numbered car and a little bit changed in the graphics. Now what's funny about this car is this is 174293 which you can see matches the label there but it says legacy control, legacy rail sounds, electrocoupler which this clearly does not have so um, yeah there seems to be some kind of weird problem here I don't know if this is a new factory but um, everything seems to be either not labeled or sort of mislabeled uh, so kind of strange and I also noticed there were no instructions in the main box when I opened it up at all nothing uh, so hopefully one of these boxes, the one that has the Vision Line car, will have instructions in it, uh, but we'll find out. But anyway, this is the, uh, you can see if I put these two side by side here, you can sort of, sort of see the difference in the graphics of the cars, but that'll look pretty cool side by side just to see the different sort of uh, paint schemes and errors and things like that that uh, New York Central used on their pacemaker freight cars, so that's cool. Alright, here's the next one, same thing, no, uh, no big difference here. Just uh, I've got again the uh, red background with the white lettering on this particular one. Uh, now, um, different road number, everything else the same. No vision on here, no electronics or anything. So, so that's the third one. All right, here is the fourth box car. Uh, again, all the same. This one has uh, the red. Um, background so you've got three with the white lettering and red background it looks like two with the black background and the black lettering but pretty much all the same otherwise so just again another road number all right so here's the last one so again we're back to the black background black lettering um, looks the same as all the other ones except when we flip it over here uh, there is an electro coupler here on this end um, got the pickups I can see the holes here for the speaker 
We've got two switches on the bottom. We got a min max again, just as usual for most of the sound cars. And there's a program and run switch right there. And then over here we can see we have our uh, sensor here. It looks kind of uh, crooked actually, <clears throat> if you're looking at it right here. I'm um, not sure if that's going to affect it or not, but I guess we will find out because it looks, uh, the sensor looks all crooked right here. I'm not sure. I'm not sure how they're mounting it. I've never seen a mount like that before actually. Um, but anyway, that is the uh, Vision boxcar and it does come with the instruction manual in that particular box. So this will tell us how we can uh, go through this portion of it. Looks like you got to program it into your legacy remote and um, from what I can see right here you have a choice of either just programming the car or you can put it in a train and then I think when it's in a train it'll act differently so we'll have to go through the manual and check that out but that's it so there you have it there is your uh, set there you've got five box cars in the caboose that is what comes with the pacemaker what they're calling freight set or expansion set so and again this is supposed to go with the new mohawks that are coming out so but um yeah we're gonna actually put it on the track and we're gonna pull it behind our um new york central j3 hudson instead for now and then uh, once we get the mohawk we'll pull it behind that but let's get it on the track see what we can do with it all right so there you have it uh there's the cars um i got them right um connected to my um hudson here so we're kind of ready to go. And the only thing is the um, Vision Line boxcar. Now this doesn't act any different than the other Vision Line boxcars that Lionel's released. Um, this one has three loading scenarios uh, that you can operate. So basically on your Cab 2 remote or even your uh, Cab 1, you can trigger the um, loading scenarios. So basically the train just has to move a little. Uh, you hit the scenario it'll start the first scenario and then if the train moves again and you launch the scenario it'll do the second scenario load step and then same thing it'll do another one third time and also um, if you uh, you know they run about I don't know six seconds or so uh, and you get this dialogue back and forth and area like that but you can also push the uh, three key um, if you want to, if you hold it down, I think you can get a longer uh, scenario. And then basically the uh, the guys will come back saying it's taking too long to load and all this other kind of stuff. So you get a little extra stuff with those loading scenarios. So you can pick up to, uh, you have up to three of those. And then there's the same thing. They have an unloading scenario where uh, when the car again starts moving and then comes to a stop, uh, you can um, press the, I think it's the six key and it will start the unloading scenario and then um, again if you're pressing and holding the six key you can extend that unloading sequence indefinitely um, and get all kinds of different extra orders and things from the foreman and all kinds of stuff so pretty standard for uh, vision line box cars nothing big there so they do have freight sounds on this uh, car they've got the uh, rail clatter they got the grinding they've got the bumps and they also have the flat wheel um, which you can also uh, trigger from your uh, cab to remote too. Um, so if the car is moving, if you want to do a flat spot or a flat wheel, um, it'll, um, I think it's uh, when you select um, key two on the controller. So as the car is moving, it's like key two, it'll start that little flat spot simulated sound and um, I think it says it'll increase uh, as the car runs. So the longer it runs, it'll keep increasing for about um, until the car stops. And then at five to seven seconds after the car stopped, then you get some more dialogue and stuff like that. So, um, so there's a couple things you can trigger. now. They recommend that you put this in a train. Um, I, I always find that like super annoying personally. Like I don't want to build trains that I don't have to. Like if I was like, you know, lashing up two engines or something like that, it's a different story. But um, I don't want to have to put this in a train because I might want to use this box car anywhere in any train. And um, then you have to set up another train and everything. So it comes by default with uh, the ID set as uh, ID one. 
and of course you can just put it in the program mode change it to any ID you want but for these types of things uh, since you're stopping the train anyway when you're pretty much doing these loading and unloading sequences I don't mind just uh, flipping over to that um, cars number on the engine menu so you just flip back and forth and you can trigger your sequence and then the train starts up again and the next time you stop you flip it over to the car again trigger the sequence etc and then um, if the train is moving and you want to do the flat spot it just flip it over to the car trigger the flat spot thing and then move on so for me personally I don't usually put these vision box cars in a train I usually just uh, give them their own ID and then just trigger them from the remote just by switching back and forth between the two engine numbers now what you want to do if you're not familiar with these is make sure that in your remote you're setting the uh, the type of um, uh, uh, car that it is to a freight car uh, because that will give you the menu with the pictures on the little menu on the cab 2 remote uh, for those different uh, unloading and loading sequences and the flat spot and that kind of stuff so alright so let's uh, I'm gonna just program this to uh, an ID here I think 17 since they all start with that number on the freight cars and then uh, we'll come back and uh, see what it sounds like all right there you go so I programmed it to 17 you can see I've got my icons now here you can see there's a unloading and loading icons there's a sound up and down right you've got uh, the rear coupler so not sure what uh, the flag means and some of these other things but anyway uh, you've got all the freight sounds uh, cars icons here so now you can actually um, use them to trigger it so you just hit engine 17 when you want to trigger them so I'm gonna set this back to the run mode and then we'll give this a try alright so here we just have the, the box car itself so we're just gonna move it a little just have to get some motion in it so now we're stopped and we're gonna hit the uh, unload or excuse me the load button on the keypad okay let's get these boxes loaded up listen up we gotta get these crates on that car now be careful of that one it says it's fragile <laughs> he laughs there when he says it's fragile watch out that one's gonna fall you got it be careful of that one it says it's fragile <laughs> So I'm holding down the three key and it's extending the sequence. Come on, let's move. We got a timeline to keep. Keep it coming. Let's keep them moving. Okay, now I'm going to let off the key. Keep it coming. Grab that straggler. Why is it still on the dock? I'll go get it. We're done here. Finally, let's head on to the next station. Okay, so that should be uh, the first unload sequence, and then if we move it... We're going to do it again. All right, we need to make some room for these special crates. Doing an extended sequence. We got a pallet missing. Let's find it. Now, if you don't do the key, you just get a couple of lines of dialogue. Okay, I'm gonna let off. Secure that door. We're done here. Now that this stop is finally done, let's get to the next stop. Okay, so that's the second um, loading sequence. And then we'll move it a little bit more. And then we're gonna do the next one. Okay, let's try to stay organized. Forklift coming through, make way. That's going on balance, right? Yep, that's what I'm counting. Give me some more water. The dust is killing me. There's more? Alright, let's move. Keep an 
Okay, I just left off the button and then it, it concluded. So that's the three supposed uh, loading sequences. Now the unloading sequence, you can trigger any time. You don't have to do a loading first, but of course it wouldn't make any sense. But uh, again, when it stops, you just hit the unloading sequence. And you can hold it too if you want to get the extended sequence. Start unloading from the left. Let's sweep off those ramps too. So you get a couple different sequences you can choose from, uh, and again, it, for the uh, loading sequences, it's uh, you have to get the car moving between, and then it'll move automatically to the next sequence next time you trigger it, and then the unloading, same thing, you can uh, just hit it any time. You can also hold down either of the buttons to extend the sequences to get more dialogue, so kind of cool. There's also a, uh, a coupler button here, um, doesn't seem to do anything there, but if I do the... Uh, coupler on the legacy uh, remote as usual then it works fine so I'm not sure what the so I, I think these are generic icons that are used for all the uh, freight cars so the only the ones that apply to this one would be in the manual that they talk about you do have the the volume up and down here so you have a couple of them um, but most of them don't do anything else except for that all right so let's talk about uh, that's the dialogue portion let's talk about the actual freight sounds so you do have the normal freight sounds, which are going by that little um, sensor on the bottom. So you get the knock of the wheels as they clatter and stuff like that. That's normal. You get the rail clatter um, that makes it seem like it's passing over rail joints. That you can actually turn on and off if you don't like the rail clatter. So freight sounds are just on and off by the switch. But on your legacy uh, remote here, there's an A button and using the A button actually will uh, turn off the uh, rail clatter if you don't like it. So you do have that option uh, to turn it off um, and you get a sound when you do that telling you it's turned on and off. Um, you can also use the switch on the bottom of the minimum maximum switch to minimize uh, and mute the rail clatter. So that's another way you can do it. But then you, you're basically minimizing all, all the sounds. So it just depends what you want to do. Then you have the grinding sound, which is a high-pitched uh, sort of metallic scraping sound. Uh, and again, you can turn that on and off, and that is the button on here, which is the B button over here. So again, if you just want to turn off a specific sound like the grinding, you don't like it, you can do that. And again, the min-max switch uh, on this particular one has no effect. So it doesn't matter what you set it to. The grinding sound is either on or off based on that uh, B button. Then you have the bumping sounds, uh, and that will actually change um, based on the speed of your car. So motion uh, starts and stops that basically. You get those uh, metallic groans and scrapings and things like that. And again, that minimum maximum switch has no effect on the bumping sounds, they're just there. And there's no way to turn them on and off in the uh, remote. And then we have the, the one that I think is the cooler one, which is the flat wheel sounds. Um, so the boxcar has to be moving, obviously, to uh, get the flat wheel sounds. And then it's actually um, key number two here, which is that little sort of wrench. Um, if you can see it there, but there's like a wrench at the top there. Looks like a wrench. I'm not sure what it's supposed to indicate, actually. But anyway, that's the uh, flat wheel uh, sound effect. And... Um, if you hit that while the car is moving, you get that simulated sound effect. And uh, it increases uh, as the car runs. And then after the car actually stops, you'll hear a dialogue from one of the workmen that they, the wheel's fixed and you're good to go, I think. So that we can test out. We'll run the train a little bit and hit that button and see if we get the flat wheel uh, running and stuff like that. And again, the, um, the minimum maximum switch, um, 
if you set it to minimum it disables the flat wheel effect so um, and just a side note if you're running conventional you can't you don't get the flat wheel effect so so those are the effects now if you do put this car in a train it will have a train brake uh, sound effect also so when you're using the brake slider and stuff like that on your uh, remote um, you'll get sounds uh, so it does have some extra sounds for train uh, brake if you put it in a train if you're doing it like I am and you're running it outside a train and just controlling it directly with the cab too you will not get those sounds but like I said before I find it a pain to have to create all these trains uh, for if I'm moving this uh, car around to different consists and stuff like that so I just let it to whatever I program it to and that's pretty much the end of it and if I'm missing one or two little sounds it's okay by me I get most of the sounds of what I'm after so and that's pretty much it so let's put it into the uh, consist here and we'll just run our um, engine pull it along and then we'll see if we can get this flat spot sound to work and see what it sounds like Okay, there we are. we're running along. We're just going really slow so we can capture this on video, but you can hear it making squeals and sounds. So we're going to hit this. Uh, let's see if we can get some... Uh Okay, I'm not sure you guys could hear that. It definitely it started up like uh, you got to get it moving just a little bit, and then when you hit the uh, number two key, you can start hearing the the flat wheel, and it gets louder and louder and louder as it moves along. And then uh, once you stop the train, if you uh, wait just a couple seconds, and he'll make that that dialogue that you just heard uh, a couple seconds ago. So let me back it up and let's get it. Let me see if I can try to get it moving a little faster and they get it uh, making that sound so you can hear it. give you that final dialogue after you stop when you do the flat wheel uh, activation so it's really hard to uh, hear on the video here when I'm trying to hold the camera handle the cab to remote switch between an engine and a freight car and then hit the buttons and everything so uh, just trust me when I say when you do hit that uh, number two button it will start the flat wheel spot uh, sounds and they get louder and louder as the train gets faster and faster so unfortunately I couldn't make it go fast because then it flies by before I can uh, videotape it but you get the idea so it's going to uh, just increase in sound until you stop the, the uh, train and once you stop it you wait about five seconds and then it'll do that final dialogue to let you know so that's kind of a cool feature the flat spot feature and again all these features uh, if you read the manual you'll be able to see which ones you can turn on and off and which ones are always there but I love these uh, freight car sounds. I've got the regular ones in my um, other uh, consist. And I usually put like two of them or so. 
And then they also give you some instructions in there that you can also, if you have more than one, set the minimum and maximum buttons uh, in one of them the opposite direction so that it will play the dialogue just from one of the boxcars and not both. You still get all the sounds, but the dialogue will only come from one boxcar if you do that and they're in a train. So um, there are some advantages to putting them in a train, especially if, if you have more than one. But uh, for me, I just keep them separate and I just control them with the cab two, uh, which is no problem as long as I'm not holding the video camera. So everything's good there. All right, so let's take a look at this train just running. Okay guys, that's it for the New York Central Pacemaker Freight Set, or what they call the Expansion Set. Again, you get five boxcars, one of which is a Vision Line boxcar, and you get the caboose at the end there, which is lighted. No smoke, just lighted. And that's it. And uh, it's got some nice features for the Vision Line boxcar, pretty much the same as most of them. Um, and uh, I think Maybe even getting two of these sets would be really great. You'd have a nice long uh, consist of the uh, red and gray pacemaker scheme, which I love. And I can't wait to see this paired up with the matching Mohawk engine that's uh, about to be released, hopefully in uh, a month or so. And we'll see that pulling these uh, freight cars. So that would be one cool looking set once it's all said and done. So. And yeah, I may get a, another set of these just to double the, uh, the length of all the box cars. Plus then I'd get another Vision Line car at the same time. So, um, and if you check out the price at your dealer, you'll find out that that is actually a really good price for all these cars plus a Vision Line car in the set. So not bad. Um, like I said, I did notice that it had a Vietnam stamping on the bottom, which I don't think I've seen before personally, but that may be something I just never noticed or uh, maybe just never got one of the items that actually was made there but um, and that's pretty much it so as always if you like this video make sure you hit the like button subscribe share and I'll uh, see you next time peace guys